first question, who of you are more like, um, nah. so there are front-end designers and front-end engineers. I would say front-end designers are those who do more like HTML, CSS, and then the, and the engineers are more like hardcore JavaScript stuff and a little bit of CSS, HTML. So front-end designers, could you raise your hand? Okay, one, two. Oh, it's already okay. And uh, front-end engineers, could you raise your hand? Hardcore. Oh, jeez, please. All right, uh, so, sir, can I ask, who are other people here? Yeah, <laughs> and the other, who's still looking for a job? So, who's looking for the job? Uh, and don't worry, yeah, yeah, that's awesome, that's awesome, you, you should be here. And and the back-end developers? All right, oh, wow. nice to see you. Nice Thank to see you. you. All right, so my name is Carlos. I've been, uh, uh, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, I've been working uh, six years as a front-end developer. At the moment, I'm working uh, in Wood Phoenix as a front-end consultant. I'm working on the design systems there. Uh, I tweet about CSS, front-end geek stuff. So if you want, you can follow me. And uh, I really love the thing I do. So first of all, I'll tell you a bit of history, uh, why I'm doing this and, 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 and how, how did I get the job. So when I was studying, uh, studying at the University of Latvia, I was a second year student. I had to find a job, you know, to pay the things, how, how, how it happens in Latvia. Uh, so what I did, I, I knew that I wanted to work on HTML, CSS because I like the thing. And uh, I knew that I wanted to be a programmer. I, don't, I didn't want to wash the dishes or, or uh, work on in any restaurant. So I was uh, at that point. I didn't know. I didn't have any experience. But I did have a skill. I was uh, I was socializing a lot. So whenever I went to people, I said hi, Harris. How how are you? Uh, uh, how's your wife? Maybe you want to be my next employer. You know. And just one day I got lucky, and this is how I got my first job. And since then, I have been working a lot and figuring out what I don't want to be and what I want to be. And this is how I just figured out that I want to be a, a content designer. So, but through this path, I have realized that uh, uh, there are a lot of rumors about how prestigious this work. You know, whenever somebody uh, talks about CSS and HTML, everybody's like, hey, really? Like, that's, that's you know? In interviews, especially, or in university, that the guys brag about React and like hardcore stuff, and then you're like, yeah, I'm uh, doing the CSS, HTML, a bit of JavaScript, you know, in J, yeah, jQuery or uh, how it's called, vanilla uh, JavaScript, you know, and then people really look at you like a weirdo. <laughs> yeah, but I'm here to tell that it's totally okay. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, people respect your decisions, your your uh, your suggestions and uh, you get paid well. So I will show you the first steps how to start to be a front-end designer. And uh, first of all, what you need is uh, confidence. You can imagine standing here. This is uh, for me. It's the greatest thing I can do. I really hate public speaking. I love pe uh, uh, talking to the people, but I really hate being here. I'm really stressed. So first of all, what you need is confidence. Whatever you do, whenever you go to interview, nobody cares that you don't know a thing they ask. You have to be confident about what you're doing. And to be confident in a front-end field, you have to know three things. You have to know the CSS fundamentals. Otherwise, you will be really blown off by the way how CSS can, uh, can uh, damage your nerves. Uh, then you have to be modular. This helps you to cooperate with your colleagues and uh, be more productive. And the third, third thing is, when you got this, you have to learn fast, really fast. Frontend is developing really fast, so you have to follow up the things. So first of all, as I said, this is CSS. When you don't know the fundamentals, this <laughs> is really happens like this. So first of all, you have to learn the fundamentals. And what are the, the, the CSS fundamentals? Three things, box, model, and now it's here. Box, model, floating, and positioning. So what's under these, uh, these, these uh, properties, CSS? So here you see most used uh, uh, CSS properties. 
and how they play together. And basically, if you know all of these things, you're okay to go on. Just, uh, I will have the presentation later. You can check out the things if you can uh, figure it out how this works and how it is. And if you know the stuff, move on. But before that, I thought, okay, I will give you just one small task, a small question. So I have here a small HTML code, and then I have a Chrome inspector, I would say. So it's really simple. You know, I, I removed everything from the body. I removed the margin so you don't have a, um, other questions. I added some padding so the input element is in the middle, centered. And then the main part is for the input element, I added some padding within, on the top and on the sides, and then I said, okay, it has to be 100% wet. Is this image correct or it's not? So who say that this image is not correct? Okay, one, two, three, four, roll. Okay, and who says that image is correct? Okay, still, all right. Maybe weird question. So why it's not correct? You can just scream from your place. Box All right, we're going on the on the right direction. So this is the box sizing, <laughs> really. And box sizing is one of the CSS properties which says, okay, uh, you should include or exclude the, the padding from uh, from uh, from the width total. So basically, as you can see on that side, it will not be a hundred percent if if the, it's a padding box, but it will be even more. So sixteen pixels plus hundred percent. All right, anyways, here's the, some tests. You just go through these questions and tasks and check. If you know this, you just go on with the uh, modular CSS. This will be later in the slides. You can check it out later. So being modular, how you can be modular and why you need to be a modular, as I said, it really helps to organize your work and really helps how productive you are. And also, these two things come together, how you cooperate with your colleagues. So first of all, you have to be productive modular in mind. So you have to whenever you open a Delphi tab in it or BBC or any web page, you just have to see it like, you know, you have to see the modules there. The second thing, you have to put put those modules inside of the file system to to organize your code and to be able to search them easily easily and <coughs> and the next part, huh, BAM, uh, the modular CSS. I will talk about it a bit later. So how it is being modular in mind? First of all, what do you see here? It's a Latvian use portal. I can explain you what I see here. On the top of the screenshot, I see a header which contains of a brand identity or logo block. Uh, on the bottom, we have the navigation. Navigation consists of uh, Topics. the elements. Sorry? Topics. Yes, I didn't hear, sorry. Topics. Yeah, top. well, topics. Yeah, exactly, the topics, the, the media elements. So after that, I see that there is missing, for example, a uh, header for a mobile navigation, and uh, then I see that we have the media elements, and these media elements are put in, in uh, various ways around. So there is one element which is just repeating there, and it's put in into the 12 column grid. So this is what I see. Oh, okay, I also see the gray block, which is, uh, I, I think, placed for uh, advertisements. So, so what I suggest you to do when you just start uh, working on HTML and CSS, you just draw it, uh, write it down on the paper. It's a really ugly sketch, but you write down the structure. So if you know the structure of the page, you, you can kind of work on it just before. So before you implement it, you just write it down. So at that point, you realize, okay, maybe I'm missing uh, mobile navigation, or okay, I need to get 12 column grid, or, or this is the repeating thing. And this is the way how you also can communicate the design or, or the, how you will implement this front end with your other front end developers. So this is kind of knowledge exchange. You will say, okay, I, will, I would use here an article or, and then you argue about things. And this is how you learn. And when you got this, I have to say, there is no turning back. You get it like this. Always when you go inside of uh, any public place, you just see things like this. It's kind of matrix. You, you don't see the text, what is there. You don't see the bus schedule or whatever. You just see it in like, like a matrix. It's not bad. I really like it. It's, then you can call yourself a CSS geek. And then when you see those modules, you put them in a file system. You organize them. 
Have you seen, I think even back in developers know the situation, the, the 5,000 code line CSS files where you have to change something. Right? Who have seen those 5,000 code lines in CSS now? No? All right. Okay. So it's like this. Whenever you have to find uh, any, any, any uh, uh, sorry, class or ID, you have to always find it. So the problem with those long CSS files is that uh, what's the time you really start fixing the issue? First of all, cheers. Um, first of all, you have to locate the, the code block in the CSS. First, so you scroll and then you try to find where, the, where, where it starts, where, where I'm working on this. So I'm working on this article, I should find it. Okay? You scroll it down and you have to find start and ending point. And then when you have uh, found the place, you, you already forgotten what is this, this issue about, what you have to fix. So when you have the CSS in multiple files, it's much easier to navigate it and search it. You can search the file much faster. The second thing is uh, a really important part. If you're working on a project, on a project that lasts more than three months or a year, something that you have to refactor, you have to identify obsolete code obsolete CSS. Because if you just add the CSS at the one point, it will be a garbage. So if you split a big CSS file in multiple, <laughs> if you split a CSS file in multiple files, it, it became, becomes more, uh, how do you say, it's more easy to manage the files, all right? And you can say, okay, this is, component which is responsible just for the table. This is component which is responsible just for uh, header. And if you see the code which doesn't belong there, you can remove it. It's obsolete. If you see some code in a 5,000 row lines, bah, it's hard to understand if, if, if this will change something or this will affect something else. So you try to separate the things, right? The third part is, yeah, easy to hide the dirty code. You just sabotage. You know, sometimes there's the deadline, tomorrow, yesterday, that you had to finish, and you just put that dirty code line CSS inside. It, it, it comes together with the second point, so you can hide really easily the code. You say, okay, header or header background, black, important, black, that's it. With important tag, you, you can sabotage all of the CSS files. So. And it's much easier to see them if you have them in smaller part, uh, in smaller components. It's much easier to no uh, notice those those small parts. <coughs> All right, what I suggest you to do is to use something uh, a processor. It doesn't mean preprocessor, postprocessor, processor. In this case, I would say it's a goal. And then use a, a module that allows you to write uh, pseudo CSS. In this case, I just uh, added a SAS. And uh, what they allow you to do is write CSS like in a normal programming language. You can use for loops, you can use variables, you can use... Uh, uh, Make sense. Make sense, like a function. Who said that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, right. Uh, and in this case, I just use include. Of course, okay, as, as you can see, you just separate all of the CSS components in the small files, and then you include them in one file, so you just keep yourself organized. And uh, yeah, I will not tell you about all the magic thing that SAS and GOLD does, all right? You have learned later. Uh, of course, you can use uh, CSS includes, but uh, they require uh, extra HTTP requests. So I would uh, suggest you just to use, at the moment, maybe the GOLD and SAS to, to, to do that. Why? Yeah, not why. This also <laughs> allows you to keep, you, uh, to keep the code dry. If you know that you have already button components, you will think twice or thrice be before you implement something similar to the button again. So it keeps you aware of things you already have. All right? So a few warnings before we go on. First of all, if you have a CSS module, or SAS file, or less file, or whatever, which contains more than 300 lines, there is something wrong. Because you have to be, uh, because it's too big. It's, it's, it's not one component. One component is, should do the one thing. Maybe one component encapsulates other components, but it should be as small and it should contain another 300 whole lines. The second point is when you use the tools, 
So we always text threads. Otherwise, you have watching always going. Uh, if you use tools, keep it simple, please. Because uh, now when you start, you, you have those cool tools such as uh, Gulp or Grunt, and then you make a configuration, and then kind of comes a new person, and you have to teach him for a month that, OK, this works like this, and this calls that that. And keep it simple, really. Don't make uh, <coughs> tools as a thing, another thing that is a goal. A goal. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Just reading the thing. Modular CSS. This is really a uh, uh, hard topic. First of all, I will tell you what is the BEM, block element modifier. I will show you. And then I will answer the question why you should use it. So let's just look. Remember that the Devinet portal, news portal, we looked at. Imagine that this is the header. The header consists of a multiple blocks or components. And here it's the logo, block, search <coughs> block, authorization block, and the menu block or the tabs. And blocks can contain other blocks. So next thing, let's take the navigation or menu block. And each block has their own elements inside of it. So block and element. And as you can see, the third. Uh, third tab here has a different state, it's active, and this is a modifier. So basically, block element modifier, this is what BEM is. And for BEM, BEM is huge. We're taking just, in this case, the BEM naming convention, all right? So this is like this. Whenever you will have a block or element or whatever you have in your HTML, you will have to add a CSS class, all right? So in this case, for example, block is the tabs, Oh, I can show you like here. Tabs, if you have tab link, you add it like this. And then if you want to uh, switch between active or unactive states, you just add this active class. <coughs> the wrong way is how we did it before. And this is our, why, why it's wrong, I will explain you in the next slide. All right? So this allows you to keep a flatten select, uh, selectors. So you have one class to select something. You don't go deeper. All right, so why? First of all, this makes the component self-sufficient. If I will take my header component and put it in your website, it will work. It keeps it, it isolated, all right? The second part, it, and most important part, it handles specificity. Specificity is really a bad word in a CSS and front-end world. So for example, if you have a, an element, you want to give a style it. So you have, for example, the tabs element. First of all, at the beginning of the project, it's really easy. You just write tabs class, and then you say background blue. All right, and then you have an update, and you have to, again, target this tabs. And to, uh, to, to target this uh, tabs object, you have to write more specific class, because you couldn't find it in five or four months. So you have to overwrite it. And then you write, OK, the, the tabs class, which is in the body. Next time you write, OK, the tabs class, which is in the body and wrapped inside of the HTML. And then if you cannot overwrite the style, then you again write, for example, important tag, tag at the end. So it's always the problem of trying to understand who has written more specific CSS or style. So, and then handles that, then naming convention. At the, at the moment, it's really like, tricky, but don't worry, you will get it after you will get the modular thinking and modular file system. All right. And the, so, now we know, as I said, we know how to <coughs> modular. Second thing, sorry. First thing was learning CSS basics. The second thing was being modular. And the third thing is learning fast. Because when you will have the basics, you will have to really learn fast. And not because to be the first and to know much more, but because your uh, next employer will really want to you to be confident in the things. All right? So it's like this. Always going through the, the Twitter feed, always going through the, through, through the news and so on. So basically, you will have a lot of questions here. So for example, do you know the answer? What is WCAG? Are, are our pages WCAG2 com, uh, compatible? Or should we use icon fonts? Or should we use SVG icons? And why should we do that? 
And from, the, from time to time, you will have to say, no, we shouldn't do that because it will, uh, it will, we will waste a lot of time and then we have to refactor and so on. And sometimes you will have to say yes. Because why? Because you're an expert. You have to know the things. So let me just check. And what is expert? Yeah, expert is a T-shaped, <coughs> confident T-shaped person. You have to be confident and you have to know the thing you're doing, all right? So first of all, you just focus on the things you, uh, that really matter, the CSS, HTML, a bit of JavaScript, about the, uh, a bit of design and the communication with the, with the people in, in your group. And then you take all the other things, uh, user experience, so REST API, design stuff, and you build the knowledge of, uh, around you, right? So how to stay up to date? My, my way is following in the Twitter for, I, I follow these people here, also a lot more. Then, then I, I read the RSS feeds. I use Feedly to organize from my RSS feeds. And these are, I think, only five, uh, only five web pages I, I, I grab the articles off, and it's really a lot already. And then I listen to the podcast while I'm running, <coughs> or just going to and from work. And when you have a conferences, at the end of the conferences, after uh, a month or less, you can just uh, watch the watch the, the talks, and there you can get the latest topics, latest trends. All right. So let's recap. CSS fundamentals, <coughs> being modular and learning fast. When you got this, you also got the job, almost. It's not, so this is kind of being expert part. Next part, I think most important part is why you're here. Socializing. Oh God. <laughs> exactly, so it, it's like you have to just talk with people. I know that I, I have talked not with most of you, but I have just talked with you guys. So it's, it's just talking with each other and saying what you're doing, or writing a, a blog post, or, or, uh, or talking about the things you really like. Would you like to work for a Disney, or would you like to uh, create a web page that uses the latest technologies? Nobody knows about it, that you want to do that. You have to tell the people around. And if you tell one people, maybe the second will know about it also, and you have to communicate with the people, right? So it, it, it's as easy as just uh, going to the people and saying, hi, my name is Joshua Carlos, or whatever. I like that <coughs> map. It's, it's weird, really. The first contact is weird. It's like aliens, you know. Kind of. <laughs> but uh, my favorite part is, uh, as I said today to, the, to Oswald, that I really like to just hijack the conversation. There are pe two people talking about the thing, for example, um, some JavaScript library or whatever, something that you're interested in. Not just, don't be rude, please. Just go there and you know that you want to speak to the person and you say, you just hijack the, the, the topic and then you start talking about it and then you're in, in this conversation. At the end of the conversation, you say, hi, my name is Carlos, all right? Or you can ask me some questions now after this presentation. You will know me, I will know you, and after that you can come to me and talk with me. So. Socialize. This is really, really important to get the job. That's why you're here in the front end meetup. So basically, that's it. Thank you for your attention. Here are still some references that I, then, that I suggest you to just check it out. Uh, I really like this audio group also. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, please. I have a question. Um, how often do you, have you found, I, I don't know how many jobs you applied, but how often you found that the employer itself doesn't quite know what he needs? <laughs> sometimes he needs back a front end engineer, sometimes he needs front end designer. I really like your question. So, what I've done the past few years, I, I tend, I try to not be in comfort zone. So that's why I change my job kind of every two years. So in this situation, it's pretty. Uh, it, it, it happens a lot to me. If you go to the to the meeting, and there's usually that's also the PR, not PR people, but people who HR HR people, yeah. You know, and and also then comes maybe a project manager, 
But then you realize, hey, this is the point. You come with your laptop and you say, I'm a front-end developer. They, they, they don't know what, you should just sell what you're doing. You don't have to tell that, oh, I'm not the back-end developer. They will tell, okay, we need to do this, this, this. And then you say, hmm, uh, I'm kind of not doing this, but I'm doing this great stuff. I, I build, for example, I build pattern libraries. I build, I, I do the design systems. And by the way, this is the how I got the job in Italy. They didn't have my position. I would just went there and I said, I'm doing this thing. I, I will build you, uh, for all of these products, I will build uh, one uh, similar design. And, and, and then they said, oh, okay, after four months, they called me and say, okay, let's, let's do this. So the thing is, if this job is not for you, you have to say, all right, this, this is something not for me, but I can suggest you these, 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 this person, this person here is the, the contact. And, but if you need an expert in this thing, you just call me and maybe you, you don't get me a full time, just maybe three hours or whatever. So I think when you build, you have a conversation in this way, it's, it's uh, I think, better. Did I answer your question? Yes. All right, next question, please. By the way, you can ask questions also after the presentation. There. How about you here? Uh, I have a question. Yes. So here we have a policy if you're pitching a job offer, uh, you should say the salary range. And so what's the what what would be the salary range for a good front end designer here in Latvia? Classify good. What does uh, good mean? Maybe what is the minimum you would accept? Like, not low, <laughs> what is the minimum you would be ready like, to do? A good developer would be, he knows Ben, he, he can write uh, all of these things that he said. He's fast. Yeah, he, he writes fast, maintainable maintainable CSS, uh, knows how, to, how, how, how browser compatibility things, uh, things work. Uh, can animate SVG and so on and so forth. But for, for what I know, a good developer for starters to get a job as a guy who has 80% good communication and 20% technical skills. Also that. I would say so, yeah. <laughs> but again, the salary is a tricky thing. I will give you a suggestion or say, uh, something that advice. Yeah. Sorry, advice, yeah, this is the thing. This is the guy here. <laughs> <laughs> so advice. When you go and if you change the work, and that's why I suggest you change work a lot of times, Ask for multiply it by 1.5 at least. So whenever you so because when you're a student, you get the job for 300 euros, and then you pay more attention and you're more expert, and then you ask for something like six, seven, eight hundred, and then you you have a your girlfriend, and you have to go uh, out and do a lot of things and have to more focus on the work, and because it's stressful for a project manager, then you ask for 1,400 or 500. And it, it it really depends on you how you how much you ask. I would say yeah, no, not trying to go around the thing. Uh, ask a lot <laughs> because because uh, like my friend Carlos also said, if you ask too less and people respond straightforward that oh that's okay, all right, we will write it down. But are you feeling really bad about it? Yeah, that, that's what one of my. Uh good uh, leaders, so to say, told me, if you can't do something, never do it for free. And if you're selling it, have like 100% uh, more uh, price. And if they say, yeah, well, try to give it less. If, if you're evaluating something for $100, try to sell it for 200 If they say no, then you can tone it down you should give to 150 <laughs> <laughs> What? You should give a presentation. <sighs> <laughs> I am. Right, I am yeah. giving presentation in Latvian University to join e-commerce capability. So please join, or I, I should join also. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. So yeah, so I would say, don't don't get your ego really up. Just you know that you have to pay still for rent and and, and stuff. Right. But ask for shit ton of money. Yeah, <laughs> because it's not just the final result. You know, you ask and then you have a conversation. I really like conversation we have now because this is how you learn the things between a conversation. Because I went also to Italy and I asked, uh, like you said, a hot shit ton of money, and then I said, then I put their folder aside and I said, uh, 
we will not give you that much. And that's it. And this is, and then you start talking and you try to find a solution. And I, we, we had some just bargain there and that's it. Awesome. I think uh, please uh, afterwards go talk to Carlos. He's an awesome guy. And thank you. Thanks.